Welcome to the American Med Spa Association podcast, Medical Spa Insider. This week, AmSpa President and CSO Kathy Christensen is speaking with Dr. James Smart from Victoria and Samantha Pino, APRN FNP from Face by SP. Welcome to Medical Spa Insider. My name is Kathy Christensen. I'm the President and CSO of the American Med Spa Association. I also have these handy dandy headphones on today, so forgive my forgive my appearance. Um, I'm so excited today because we'll be talking uh, with several professionals in the industry that really know what they're talking about when it comes to the power of photography and photos in the space. I know that's something that is critical for a successful medical spa, medical aesthetic practice. Um, it's something that we hear all the time um, when when asked what makes what kind of takes you from good to great uh right. phot- photography powerful photography accurate photography is there. a huge thing in the industry and I'm, I'm very happy to be with dr james smart and also samantha pino they will be talking to us a little bit today about jackie which is a photography um it's more of an app correct um and they'll Worth be t- yeah, it's a platform, and we can talk about that during the podcast, certainly. Absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead, and, and Dr. Smart, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us kind of about your background in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for having me, first of all. Um, my name is James Smart. I'm a, a board-certified plastic surgeon. Um, I did my training at the University of Pennsylvania and then went on to do what's called a fellowship in craniofacial surgery, which is, you know, essentially a form of aesthetic surgery. Um, it's a little bit more involved because we can alter the face, you know, and the skeleton and whatnot. So um, it's it's kind of one of the more advanced versions of facial aesthetics that you'll see. Um, and from there, I have been, uh, I've practiced in both academic settings and uh, private practice. And now I head up uh, the team at Victoria, which is the company that brings us Jackie. And um, that has been really a continuation of a, a journey of mine in digital health. Um, I've had, you know, I've just been blessed to have the exposure to a number of different projects. And um, uh, it's exciting to be able to talk to you all about Jackie. Wonderful. And Samantha, please let us know more about you and so glad to have you both on. I'm so happy to be here. So I am a nurse practitioner. I'm based in Miami. Um, my Most of my career was bedside nursing and critical care, trauma, ER, things of that sort. And then I went on to the aesthetics field. Um, it's a field we all know and love very much. Very different from the hospital, but very exciting in its own ways, especially because of things like this. There's so much innovation that can be had in this growing field. Um, I currently own a practice in Doral, and we've been open for about two years now. And yep, that's my journey. All right. So before we get uh, out ahead of our skis, tell me, I want to know more about Jackie. Tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about it, what inspired it. How yeah. it and then I want to go into some of the, I know you guys have what you consider your three key moments. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to, to diving into that because I think it really does help understand and really make specific and detailed the importance of photography in your practice. So tell us about Jackie and and how it came to be. Absolutely. So, um, well, it really came as out of my experience as a plastic surgeon, totally organically. So, um, you know, we're always seeing patients in our offices for procedures that they've had, but once they leave the office, setting communication and um you know especially capturing photography becomes a lot more difficult right Mm -hmm. and and let me just start maybe with a little vignette because i think we've all seen it right let's say you have a patient you've had a recent procedure and um they're at home right and a a good example is maybe a touch-up from a neuromodulator right um, they're at home and you want to communicate very effectively with them. And my whole career, you know, I, it may have been rhinoplasties and facelifts instead of Botox, but the same problems were there. You know, if I, if, um, if a, a patient would contact the office early in the morning and they may say, I have a concern of some sort, it gets triaged through the office and 
that can take numerous steps, whether it's, it ends up on the, you know, at the front desk first, ultimately in the hands of a physician or a extender of some sort. And then it arrives at the provider's doorstep. And oftentimes the data we have to make decisions, um, can be not quite optimal, right? So, um, you're a patient may have a concern at home. One of my first questions was always, well, could you provide a photograph? Cause it would really maybe save us a lot of time. And man, that was challenging. I, uh, I would receive photographs that were sometimes just not helpful, but also just, you know, I wanted to give my patients the ability to take these photographs in a way that was not only meaningful for me, but for them. Right. And so that was the, and then it gets into all the other layers of communication related to texting, but also related to creating an environment where the biologic process that we're talking about, whether it be a facial, whether it be Botox, whether it be a filler, they all have different biologic um, behavior, right? And so the time course and the the reminders and the journey you want to take a patient on is different. So that was the inspiration for Jackie. And, and fundamentally, it's all about communication. So great communication means great relationships and businesses that expand. And um, I just wanted to create the platform really for myself to start and then I found that it probably addresses wider, uh, a wider interest. So can you explain kind of how it works? Um, what makes it different from your average just selfie mode when someone's trying to take a picture? What are the benefits to it? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, let's start with photography because I think, you know, you, uh, Kathy, you mentioned that it's obviously important, right? And um, one of the key uh, challenges I had as a doc was that I would get pictures taken all over the place, right? And even if you have a little guide, for instance, on a uh, iPad or a phone that is going to guide a patient, it's oftentimes actually hard for them to do it reliably at the same time. And so uh, the first thing we did was tackle the challenge of what's called registration in image analysis, okay? And what that means, everybody who's had a CT scan or an X-ray has been in a registered environment. It means that the device that is taking your picture is in a certain position relative to your face, in this case, right, or your body. And how to do that, how to provide registration for pay, uh, patients and clients was the first challenge. And so that's what Jackie's photographic environment does. It creates um, a well-registered environment, and then it produces images that are appropriate for the treatment at hand, right? So full face is appropriate in some situations. You want obliques. Sometimes you want to focus down on eyes and eyebrows or maybe wrinkles, and the photographs that we sometimes have for them are different. So um, Jackie was created, A, to solve that problem of photography and make it easy and fun even for patients to take their photos. Um, th so that's one. Jackie includes uh, photography. The other thing is um, communication, texting. You know, Jackie is a fully encrypted texting environment. And um, that was key because, you know, all of us as providers – for years, I gave out my personal cell phone number, right? And um, it wasn't really great from a medical legal standpoint because it's not um, a phone that has logging and all of these comments and whatnot. But it's also just, it was arduous because I felt like I didn't, you know, I, everybody got my personal cell phone number. And I know that that's something that we want to give out because we want to please our patients. But at the, the same time, we might like a system of communication that was a little bit more straightforward. So it includes that. And then also the final piece that I think makes it a, a bit novel is that we have a series of, of gamified reminders, which are part of the platform, which are, uh, which address individual patient journeys, for instance, a neuromodulator. And that reminder system is there to really to show the patient, well, when is it appropriate to take photos? Is it all the time or is it really at the key points of a biologic process? And so that's what, you know, photos, safe texting, and then uh, reminders and a system that reflects biology. 
that's what we were going for first. And it sounds like there's a lot uh, in the patient's hands as well. Is, is that correct? It's kind of making some of... Absolutely. Yeah, talk to me about that. And Samantha, I'm curious, I assume that that you utilize this in your practice as well, and you can kind of tell us. I'd like to just bounce off of some of the things that he's mentioned in the sense that I think it's hard for patients who don't know how, like, let's say, a Botox treatment works, right? When does it peak? How long does it last? When is it appropriate for me to get it again? When should I expect results? A lot of times it's not until they come back to the practice for their two-week follow-up we retake the photos, compare them side by side, and they're like, wow, I didn't even realize the change. Or in three to four months, why well, I didn't realize it's gone. Or I think it's gone. I think it's time for more, but really it's not. You're nowhere near your baseline. Difference. And that's the main thing. I think this app allows them to see that visual journey throughout. And it allows us to see, do they even need to come back for a two-week follow-up? Because maybe they don't. There's so many times that we take up our own chair time for these two week follow ups and they actually don't need anything. And that's a 30 minute slot that could have been allocated elsewhere. So I think for a practice, that's huge. But for patients, it's even bigger that they can see the result, get excited about it, and then also know when it's time to do it again, which is nice. And it's like free marketing as well, because then they can go and show it to their friends and family. It's like exciting for them, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know that um, this platform was developed to address three key moments. And one of yeah. them, uh, you kind of touched on, Samantha, was maximizing the chair um, yeah. and how preparation is everything. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how Jackie can be used to do that and benefit the provider? Yeah. Um, I think aside from us being able to save some time when maybe they don't need to come back, I think it's big in being prepared for their client before they maybe hit your chair. Um, consults are huge. We all know that. And sometimes we're, we don't have enough time to properly assess everything we wanted to for a client and give them a good treatment plan. Or we leave some things out because it's a busy schedule. Or you're a new injector and you wish you had some more time to assess and analyze and come up with a treatment plan before the client comes. So Jackie is a way that they can upload those before photos the day before, a week before, whatever the case may be. Before your client comes into office, you can have a game plan written up. If you're a new injector, you can, um, you know, touch base with whoever your superior is to make sure that maybe everything you're thinking of is appropriate. And once they come in, you you're already have a predisposed plan and it can only you know optimize what treatments they get done your time with them allow you to feel less rushed um mm -hmm. i think that's huge with jackie yeah and um you know maximize the chair to me just means uh, you know all of us do a better job when we're prepared you know no matter what it is and you know you i i think that I listened to a podcast not long ago that was, um, it had um, Harry Strom and Jason Gilmore from uh, Allergan on it. And, you know, they basically said, if you want to, you know, maximize the experience of your clients and, and drive revenue for your spa, there's really, you know, there are critical times to do that. But number one is make a full facial assessment, right? And um, we know the power of that. We know the power of that in patient satisfaction and we know it in cross sales, right? So um, it is, uh, you know, one of the things I love about Jackie is that it allows you to truly make a pretty high quality full face assessment, one that's got a, a, a sizable bit more fidelity than a uh, telemedicine call, right? And it, uh, that prepares you to do you, that full face assessment is kind of done in your mind before you even walk in. So that's really fun that it empowers that. Well, and along with that, logistically, how do you make that part of your preparation? I'm sorry, I'm having something weird happen with my eye right now. That's okay. But um, I'm, I'm curious how you add that into how you're working with your practitioners and your team. Okay. Is that like an extra step to really get them prepared or how does that work? Um, well, I know let's Sam speak to this. We have seen the one nice thing about the platform is that it's very flexible. Right. right. So um, once a 
uh, client contacts your office, they are given some materials, which then uh, allow them to log into Jackie as one of your patients. That can be provided to them on email, via text. And um, really, the way that your practice decides to implement it so that your patients do uh, see the images beforehand, or even if they do it in the chair when they arrive, that's that flexibility is there. And we watch practices of various types choose the way that they want to go. And um, I think that we're watching as we speak to see what are the very best ways to implement it so that you get the best response rate. But you can certainly send it. Uh, while they're not. I hey, think it's helpful. Keep, keep talking, Samantha. I'm going to take a pause. Yes. I'm... It's okay. I think it's helpful from what I've seen in practice to set it up while they're at home and maybe just do like the full face general one. And mm-hmm. then when you come into clinic, if you're going to do a specific treatment like neurotoxin upper face, lower face, then you can hone in on those photos while they're in clinic. But at least having that full face before coming in, especially like I said, for novice injectors is big. Helpful. Yeah. Ready? All right. Um, sorry about that. That was kind of weird. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So along with that, I wanted to talk to you about the second, mm-hmm. key, which is celebrating the outcome. And I think, Samantha, you kind of touched on this earlier, is it's fun to actually see your progress. But talk to me about this key moment and how Jackie helps that. I think the main thing is allowing patients to see their outcome. A lot of times the before and afters we take in clinic, they never see unless the provider takes the time to create them right then and there and show it to them. But who? no one really has time for that. It's usually created later. Maybe it gets posted on Instagram if they uh, consented to it. But yeah. really, they you need to show clients their before and after so that they can appreciate the change because they may gradually be seeing it and seeing themselves in the mirror, but it's not the same as when you compare it side by side and then they're like, wow, what that was worth my time, that was worth my money. And this is the only thing out there that does that. And it lets them have it on hand in their phone at all times. Hey folks, it's Alex Tiersch. When it comes to injecting in the face, safety is more than skin deep. One wrong move could cause serious injury, hurt your reputation, and possibly endanger your business. That is why AIMSPA partnered with the Academy for Injection Anatomy to create the AIA Advanced Cadaver Course, the most thorough and advanced facial anatomy course in the industry. Created and taught by renowned board-certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Chris Surik, one of the foremost facial anatomists in the world, along with his hand-chosen faculty, the most experienced injectors in the industry. Students experience firsthand and close up the anatomy of the face so that they can inject safely and confidently. Unlike other cadaver courses with large groups or limited access, the AIA Advanced Cadaver Course provides small group instruction with a high faculty to student ratio and a limit of four students per cadaver specimen. Everyone who attends gets a chance to inject real product and then dissect cross-sectionally to see how close they came to vessels and other important structures of the face. This hands-on cadaver lab follows a full day of instruction on facial anatomy from our world-renowned faculty, including discussions of complication management, rheology, and an introduction to the use of ultrasound in your practice by Dr. Steve Weiner, one of the pioneers of using ultrasound as facial injections. At this two days course, students learn how to avoid common danger zones, how dermal fillers behave, and the best places to place product for safe, outstanding results. More than 3,000 aesthetic injectors have improved the safety and efficacy of their injection techniques with the AIA Advanced Cadaver Course. Now it's your turn. Visit AmericanMedSpa.org forward slash AIA Advanced. Start your journey to safer injecting today. Well, and I feel like When you do something, if you do something aesthetically, it does change over time, as we all know. But you also can, I mean, really spend a lot of time looking at it, too. (laughs) Like, when you're in the doctor's office, you're just kind of, it's a quick blip and you're out the door. Yeah. Uh, But do you find that that leads to higher patient satisfaction or... And I think booking more treatments as well, because then they get excited, they get inspired by it. They trust you, they trust your outcomes, and it just gives them, it's like a visual as to like, okay, that that was worth it, and what's next kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. And they can show it to their 
friends too, which I assumed that Mm. results in referrals, increased referrals. And also, Kathy, though, it's private if you want it to be, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a wonderful thing because so much of our visual communication around patients, let's face it, I mean, a lot of it's on Instagram right now, right? And um, is that the setting where patients that are more discreet are going to want to share their outcomes with their providers? I don't know. But I wanted to create a platform where if you wanted to, and you could do it privately, right? And and to communicate your results and really to do it in a way that was efficient because, um, you know, handling photography and it, and it empowers them because uh, the efficiencies within your practice can be greatly enhanced if we have great visual communication, you know, and um, that was really what this is all about. But yes, it's lovely that they can, uh, you know, yeah, keep a hold of them themselves. And we just, it, you know, if you look at the testimonials that have come out of our trials, they are uniformly pretty remarkable. Um, and what I loved about them was, and, and you know, we looked at only neuromodulators to start, but if you, if you look at the comments, It was every type of neuromodulator user from brand new to 20 years in. And, you know, it was amazing, the feedback, because they said, this is the first time I've really seen my progression in such a linear way that was clear to me, right? And so those those, um, were great, and it fueled the team to do an even better job. Well, it really makes sense. Um, This is what we do. This is what this industry is about. They're coming to you for visual improvement. Like that. So in order to have that photo- like photographic evidence, and you can really see how things are doing. It makes me think of, for example, my dad just had knee surgery last year. You like, know that you're improving because you feel that you're improving. Uh, that's not necessarily the case in our industry. It's, it's a very <laughs> visual thing. Really? Can only see it. You don't necessarily see feel your knee getting better. Um, so I can completely understand why um, you are getting those remarkable testimonials. Um, it, it is good to be able to see actual progress, especially when you're spending a lot of money. I mean, people well, spend a lot of money on this upkeep. Um, yeah. And yeah. your third key moment. I'm curious. Tell me more. Yeah. Uh, well, that one is uh, basically stay true to your unique beauty. All right. And for people who have been in this game for a while, um, you know, I think that sophisticated practitioners shoot for something similar across, you know, all locations, which is that you want people to be refreshed. You want them to feel great about themselves. Um, and, you know, uh, you at the same time want to make sure that they are true to their unique beauty, right? Because, the the reality of a lot of things such as a filler is that almost no matter how it comes out it turns into a droplet right and that gives way to a face which is really really full of character and wonderful features sometimes it can take on an appearance that's you know not maybe exactly what you want and you want that balance you want to use our treatments but you want to get the very best outcome right that is that is totally um, uh, a refreshed version of yourself. And I think that keeping track of these treatments over time, you know, this is that elusive thing that we all shoot for, which is rejuvenation, but the same person, right? And so I think being able to track your journey really helps. And I'd love to hear what Sam thinks about that because, um, you know, I found that tension in my practice as a plastic surgeon. And I think that I'd love to hear from her. No, I agree. I think there's, there's two sides of it. There's the side where um, you want to see how all these little treatments that you've been doing over time accumulate to this new refreshed version of yourself. Because sometimes it's not after one treatment, it's after a few different ones over maybe the course of a year with your provider of gaining that trust. And then you'll see that initial photo and then you'll go back to now this year later after all these treatments and you can see how you attains that unique beauty, but in a natural right. refreshed way. But I think also with certain uh, age groups and just like maybe certain populations, I'm speaking for like, you know, Miami, 
in particular, it's easy for people to get carried away with treatment and get carried away and start to look maybe not like themselves, which is the other end of the spectrum. So this is like a good way to maybe like, you know, slow them down a little bit and kind of see, you know, how their natural beauty can maintain and not let them get carried away. Maybe. Yeah. And, and Kathy, that's a balance for each location, each practice to find for itself. Yeah. Right. We're not, we're not offering recommendations for how to attain that. What we're providing is just the platform on which you can reliably start to have that conversation. Right. Um, so I, I think that, and especially when you link it to the understanding of the biologic process. So, um, you know, when you link it to, oh, your neuromodulator, you know, it's at two weeks, you should see, you, we're going to assess for symmetry and we're going to make sure you, frankly, your forehead or crow's feet don't look weird, right? And that it's nice and natural. And um, that's something that you can very reliably do in in a short period of time. And then I think that that leaves you to really practice the way you want to, to deliver that special version of yourself, you know? Absolutely. I have to say, I'm very curious about the gamification. Yeah. Uh, help me, like, give me an example. Of oh, totally. So, yeah. So, um, oh, you know, take neuromodulators because super commonly performed procedures. So, um, what would, you know, when I was in practice, what I would love is a way to prompt patients to take photos that are meaningful at time points that make sense, right? It's all about that travel through time. And um, when you lick, when you um, uh, undergo, when you design software for gamification, what you're doing is you're taking that time course and you are structuring it within the software environment. So for instance, a neuromodulator. You always want your before pictures, right? But then when would the next meaningful set be? Well, probably two weeks, right? Then when would the next meaningful set be? Well, you can have a discussion about that, but we've decided to let people take their photographs monthly from then on out. And whether you are, uh, you know, whether you use a, a neuromodulator like Botox, maybe it's Daxify and the time course is a little bit different. Well, those reminders will keep you on track so that you can make the assessment for yourself. I think we all know we've heard, you know, various testimonials from providers that some things last certain times and other dosing schedules last others. And it's just, you know, again, the platform allows you to ingrain that in the way that patients interface with the software. Ultimately, what do they do? They take pictures at certain times that hopefully are rough. It's a way to kind of decrease the noise of photography and then focus on the really, the really good moments. And it makes it easy. It, like for the gamification portion, it, it gives you like these little purple circles that will blink twice and send you notification when it's time. You log in and it has exactly what you need to do. It'll turn purple when it's time. So it's it's simple, but it's fun. Awesome. So how uh, do you implement Jackie in a med spa? How does that work? Um, well, I'm super proud of the team we have because it's, it's pretty quick. So, and I think that Sam could speak to this. So, you know, if a, a potential client were to contact us, um, the time between when you contact us and really full implementation is, can be as little as half an hour. Um, basically, uh, we do need to get the appropriate credentials to get the system up and running and, um, do some billing. But as soon as that's over, we then have a variety of implementation and customer success meetings, which are um, at certain time points so that they reflect the ability to, you know, get the practices up and running. Um, the system is generally uh, functional from the standpoint of the providers taking photos and their patients taking photos um, within, again, as little as half an hour or whenever you can schedule with us. Um, and then the customer success meetings that follow generally focus on discrete topics such as photography. Is it optimized in your setting? Is there anything we can do to help you to optimize that photography? Then moving on to another topic would be logging treatments. Is that completely clear? We're happy to help you with that. 
um, and see the power that that leverages. And then when you get deeper into the functionality of note taking and, you know, uh, and, uh, potentially doing customized reminders, um, we're there to see you through that journey. Very simple compared to most. Yeah. Integrate. So I can um, say. Yeah, well, thank you for that. <laughs> took, it took a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, speaking of the work that it's taken, are you, is it kind of a situation where it's under constant improvement? Are you always kind of growing and changing or how does that work? And then also, um, you mentioned it's encrypted. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about who owns the pictures uh, mm -hmm. with your platform. Is it still the patient? Is it the practice? Is it is it uh, the makers of Jackie? How does that work? Um, just from a kind of HIPAA standpoint and and compliance standpoint, I'm curious about that. Absolutely. Um, well, I you know encryption is a topic which is. Um, inherent to HIPAA compliance systems, right? They, they simply must be. Um, and more importantly, they have the functionality of being able to audit and log appropriate things and then to be able to report on that. Um, that's all a critical part of the platform. And, you know, there are, uh, uh, within the ecosystems that are out there, there is, is texting and photographs that do travel over a variety of systems, right? So you can have things that are unencrypted through texting. You have things that are, everything on the platform is fully encrypted. So um, that's just really, uh, that that's mandated by HIPAA. And even if you're not, you know, we, we have users that are not working in a med spa context who are quite interested in Jackie. A lot of it revolves around either estheticians or uh, people in the makeup industry. And in those settings, they don't require HIPAA, but our platform follows it anyway, just because we have one way. Um, and then as far as ownership goes, you know, the client for the Jackie system is the spa owner, much like many other photographic platforms, right? Mm -hmm. So the photos are, um, you know, we handle the photos on our end because we operate the platform. But the photos are absolutely the rights to the photos can be had on both the, the you know the patients have a right to them and so do the providers, um, and that is something that we can address if there's ever a request where they need more information than what is provided on the dashboard of Jackie, then absolutely we would be happy to to uh, meet that client's needs. So is there a um, I know typically there's a we recommend that there be a before and after consent form and, and that type of thing. Is yes. that already built into Jackie or is it something you do yeah. a lot? I check? A great question. And from a legal standpoint, that consent needs to be between the provider and the patient. So, um, uh, that is, uh, how we operate. Um, we did, you know, I can't give consent for Sam on behalf of a patient to have their photographs on the system. So, um, what, uh, we commonly recommend that people do is get a consent that pretty much every med spa practice has for things like social media and do that individually with your patients. Okay. And what's coming up next for Jackie? Do you have any like 2.0, 3.0 versions? What's the next kind of iteration? Do you have anything in the hopper? Uh, well, it a lot. Um, the... Software, to your point earlier, software never really stops. If it does, it's, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a constantly evolving thing. So um, there are a number of uh, enhancements that you will see, some, some of which I probably can't talk right now. About, but it, it's, um, you know, you're going to see, uh, especially to the dashboard, you will likely see a lot more functionality that is related to um, automating the uh, schedules related to um, the biologic processes that we're talking about. So automating communication within, uh, you know, the patient journey for a ton of different use cases. Wonderful. Well, before we wrap up, one of the things that I would love to hear from you and, and any, just regardless, Jackie is amazing, but any before and afters, what are her recommendations to make sure that those are as impactful as they can be 
for a practice for mm-hmm. a patient. Um, any recommendations on like even the best lighting, the best time mm-hmm. of day, all of that. Like yep. I love some tips and tricks. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, don't take it from me. I mean, one of the greatest resources is just the American Society of Plastic Surgery Photographic Guidelines. They have been formed, Jackie, in a big way. Um, and uh, I would look to that reference because it's a great, um, I think it's publicly available, maybe even. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. ASPS may not want that. But, um, you know, it's a great resource. And, um, uh, you know, standardized photography requires good lighting and good registration for the most part. Um, if you think about the cameras that are around us right now, like, um, you know, uh, the camera that's on the back of your iPhone is individually a higher resolution thing than what's in a busy system, right? So the one, and, and it varies by phone and it's getting better and better, right? But consumer phones are really good. Um, so being able to provide good lighting and then get registration, right? Meaning that, and that's what we automate for the clients, which is that we get that, that, uh, camera positioned appropriately. Um, and that's a really good way to start, but you definitely need to be all practitioners within aesthetics. This is an, this is an absolute essential function of how we, how we work and a working knowledge that is key. Sam, do you have any other comments about that? I think the app makes it fairly easy so that you don't have to really think about things like that. Um, You know, we're always trying to get the perfect angle, the perfect lighting, but it's hard to do so because time of day, um, the client comes back in two weeks. How do you know exactly what position you put them in? This standardizes it. It doesn't let you not take the perfect angle because it won't allow you to take the photo unless you're at the perfect angle and it'll guide you as to that. But good lighting and good position is everything for a good before and after. Having the same position as your before is very hard to get. And it's the most important part. And so the app allows for that. Yeah, no, I completely agree. That's one of those things that you often see. It's like, is this before and after actually legitimate? Because And whether it's intentional or not, uh, it can just be taken in a different light. Or it can be, you know, ultimately... It can be seen as being untruthful um, yep. if you're posting it, and and it's very clear that there's that type of difference. So I, it is so impactful when there's nothing to distract you from the results. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, you know, one thing if if we have time, one thing I'd love to cover okay. is Sam's experience with her injector, um, who is a new employee of hers named Nicole. And, um, she's had a chance to, to, um, you know, utilize the Jackie platform. And I, this is a context, a new provider where I think it's really, a, a platform that can excel. Um, I yeah. wish I had it when I started out my career because my before and afters would have rolled in a lot smoother. Um, but Sam, can you speak to that? Cause you and I were corresponding about this last week. Yeah. And I just love you because I think this is really great. Yeah. I loved Jackie before, but now it's like it's taken it to another level because I hired my first injector in the clinic, which was a a big step for me and for our clinic and a very nerve wracking one because you're now leaving your clientele in the hands of someone else and you never trust anyone like you trust yourself. Right. That's just kind of like a known thing. For me as a provider, and then I'll tell you from her experience, for me as the owner of the spa and being having those nervous feelings, it was a sense of relief because I knew that she was seeing her clients before they came in. And I knew that if she had any doubt, she didn't need to worry. She can send it to me with more than enough time. Um, And we would even touch base the day before for at least the first month. Every photo she received the day prior, we would sit down the morning of or the evening before and we come up with a treatment plan together just so that I had that peace of mind that I knew we were on the same page and that she would be treating them the same way that I would. But for her, more than anything, it was how anyone who's been a new injector knows the fear and the nervousness and the pressure that comes with having someone's looks in your hands and someone's safety in your hands. It's, it's, 
it makes a lot of sleepless nights. It's very nerve wracking. Um, so imagine being able to see your client, prep dosing in your mind, prep anything that you can think of that makes you nervous before, even if you change game plans once they're in. It gives such a peace of mind for her. And she's told me time and time again, she's like, this was the best thing ever because she she's prepared. She's more prepared than she already was. And she's an amazing injector. But this is just that confidence until, you know, until she feels more confident on her own. And even then, you or not, to me, it's being prepared is the best thing, as he said. Yeah. And, you know, that that feeling of uh you know wanting to satisfy your early patients but also wanting to get going right and yeah. making sure that your early before and afters that are great don't miss them and you know? building your portfolio because yeah. you're not a, you're no one in this world these days you're no one as an injector or not no one but you know you're you're not reliable until you have these before and afters to show. Mm-hmm. It's just a case. You can be the best injector, but if you can't show for it on social media or just in general, people unfortunately do not trust that. So how do you build a proper portfolio as a new injector? And I, I can't think of a better way. All right. Yeah. That's incredible. And I mean, it's just, it cuts down on the surprises, right? Um, yeah. And the fewer surprises in these instances, I mean, we'll, we all have our obstacles every single day, but it's all, it's nice when you can cut down on some of them anyway. Agreed. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. We really, really appreciate it. Um, you are a vendor affiliate for yeah. Anspa. Uh, if people are interested in reaching out to you to learn more about Jackie, where would they find you? Oh, absolutely. Just go to the Jackie.beauty website. And then go to book a demo, and we're ready to hear from you. Um, we'd love to. All right. Let them know you heard it from AMSPA. Absolutely. Um, and uh, thank you so much for having us. Um, yep. Our interactions with the AMSPA organization have all been really exceptional. Your office is really responsive, and I hope that this journey just continues for the next few years. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and have a great evening. Absolutely. Okay. Have a great evening. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for watching the Medical Spot Insider podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future videos and podcasts. For more information about the American Med Spot Association, please check our description below.